My today's guest is Peter Lim. Peter is a photographer from Perth in Australia uh, who experiments not only with still imagery but also with uh, very special video productions. Enjoy. Peter, welcome. Nice to nice to have you here on the Frames on the channel. Um, you are a long time member of the Frames community, but so it's about time, I, I guess, to to have you online. How are you doing? You are in Australia, right? Right. Yes, I'm in Perth, Western Australia. Yeah, it is the most isolated city in the world. So you you, you take at least five hours flight just to get anywhere. Other than Bali, Bali will take you three hours. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I just love the isolation here. Yeah, but this isolated place, I can imagine it really, I can see it a little bit in your images, I guess. Uh, it can deliver some pretty pretty interesting scenarios for, for kind of minimalistic. Yes, uh, we, we, we are lucky here because we, when you travel north, thousand kilometers north, it gets really barren, outback, desolate. If you travel south of Perth, two, three hours, four hours, you, you get into the country uh, in the forest trees where you can get 50 meter tall trees you know and uh, cliffs and uh, beautiful beaches and funnily enough I, I actually do like going up north and that's where I actually got inspired with my photography that's where it's that spot was really going up there and that was in 2017 so I am an engineer by profession I enjoy the work, but I and uh, so I've been taking photos with my iPhone, and in time, you know, you just take shots of family, friends, and the odd shots here and there, and some couple of bushfire post post fire went to shoot out there with burn trees. Don't think much about it. Then when I head up north to for a ret retreat in the national park up there near Ningalo Reef and that's where I could see the barrens place it, it just gives me comfort it speaks to me that and without knowing it that's the slow start of my photography uh, passion yeah yeah no way exactly I mean I was looking at the images you sent you know my way before this recording and um, yeah I, I can see I I tried to pinpoint, you know, your fascinations right now. You can tell me if I, I've got it wrong or, or right. But I, so I can, I can definitely see you. You are really fascinated with, really with light because in many of your scenes, you are looking for this special kind of, uh, you know, light creations, you know, the, the things, the beams, the, the shapes that light really creates in the scenes. Uh, you know, uh, there is much landscape, many landscape shots, but there's also architectural shots, but it's it's so much about light. So I, I can imagine, is, is it one of your main, um, you know, one of the main elements you are you are searching for, looking for in those scenes and then creating your images? Yes, I think you, you got it spot on. Um, I, I, I'm i just uh, beginning with my photography. So when, when I went out, up, travel up north to that place, um, I can only go there in the late afternoon and only got my, at that time, all these shots were taken on my iPhone. That's when I started. I didn't have a camera yet. So I took those shots in the late afternoon light, looked at them and thought, would it be wonderful if I could go back there at night? And if I can imagine having drones, flying spotlights, the giant soft boxes lighting up <laughs> the landscape and that, that, that's how I got my uh, post-processing work going. It is the, with the concept of I'm going to shut down the light on the scene and just light it up the way I want it. So because the late afternoon light, it, the, the sun is low, so the angle of the light, I have to respect that. So when I do a night shot, I can imagine okay, I'm directing a drone up there where the sun was to shine the light down on the scene. So most of my photos are, or my images are pretty dark and it's not really the darkness. People ask me why your images are so dark, I'll just say it's not the darkness, it is the light. It's the light that is there uh, that is what gives the photo life. Like to me, light is a heartbeat of photo 
it, it gives it life. And that's why on my Instagram hand, handle, I call, I call myself Slugs Folder. I, I, I imagine myself trying to fold light. You know you can never fold light, but you always aspire to it. And that's how I see my photography <laughs> passion is like always trying to achieve that sweet spot of something that, you know, that speaks to you. So, so just to, to make sure that I'm understanding correctly. So like in many of those scenes, you know, um, you are there, uh, at the given, you know, location, let's say in yep. the afternoon. So you have a- afternoon light available, but you, you most probably from a technical standpoint now, I can imagine you. You underexpose the scene, but then you work with your sources, your artificial sources of light. Is it correct? Yes. So, so, so what I do is I, I only take the raw image. I, I, I was really fascinated with the capability of the iPhone to take raw image. So I just shoot in raw and underexpose a bit, take that into eye, into Lightroom, um, and bring down the exposure. And then I go into masking layers and start doing layers and layers of masking to, to, to sculpt or if I may say so fold the light into the scene okay so, so this is the post this is the post processing uh, uh, um, phase where you are post processing okay yeah. I see what uh, like on an emotional level you know artistic level you are basically modifying slightly the scene right or yeah. maybe extensively in some cases you know Yes. In comparison to what was there in front of your eyes. Yes. Why, why are you doing this? What, what's causing, you know, this, uh, this urge to, do, to go into this direction? I don't know. It's, uh, I, I always love the outback. Not knowing much about photography, I go out there with my phone. And actually travel up there for work occasionally. So after 5 p.m., when I leave the workplace, I got time to, to shoot. And I was just going to shoot some simple scenes. And I went there for that trip. I went up there uh, over three or four days, a couple of hours each day in the late afternoon. I was just going to shoot some scenes, be happy with that, go home, and then it just sit on my camera roll. And that's it. But when I went back, I keep looking at it. And, and I always imagine how I would love to come go back there in the middle of the night, but i not able to do that for various reasons. So... I thought, okay, what what do I want to do with this photo? See, it's sort of half finished to me. Um, so I can see, you know, how can I push it further to to fulfill my vision to what I can see. Okay. So you can start playing with it in Lightroom and from there and slowly develop that sort of seal. And yeah, that that's where it comes from. And sometimes I do struggle to to Say to people, is this photograph? Is it a photograph or is it what is it? I always struggle with that. I, am I a photographer or I'm just uh, somebody just, you know, playing with uh, the okay. Lightroom features? Yeah. So, what, what, what I do is I, I, I don't do any composites. There's no composite. It's just purely playing exposure and masking. And oh, that's sorry. pretty much it. L- let's look at, at one particular image here. So, I chose it's called uh, the Roar of Silence. Yeah, right. So I, I, you know, I didn't know all of that be- before we just talked, right? About yes. your techniques, yeah. about your approach. Yeah. From a purely visual standpoint, I absu- absolutely love this. Uh, I love this photograph. You know, like you said, it's an, it's this uh, boundary which maybe you are pushing. You know, testing photography art. For me, it looks like uh, maybe you're familiar with with uh, Turner, the famous painter. Uh, he was painting this kind of very often kind of dramatic images, you know, really, you know, spots of uh, of, of h- harsher light, you know, juxtaposed with dark shadows and stuff. I was sure, but look, I looked at the image at the very first time, of course, I was sure it was it was at night and you used artificial source of light to do, to illuminate those strikes. Uh, so tell us a little bit more, maybe just about this particular frame, you know, like, how much work was it to achieve this effect, you know, in, in post-processing? This is yes. really fascinating. Yes. So I, I had taken about 100 shots on my iPhone. And actually over the course of one year, I do one image a week. So I pick out of 500 or so, I pick one out each weekend when I'm on a break. 
and I could spend the whole day doing it, five hours, six hours, and I'll be putting on the music. I uh, can imagine what what sort of music would be go with this post processing edit. So I'll be out in the back, yeah, wait, wait, headphones which on. Which music? Which music went with this one? Do you remember? Oh, <laughs> I can't quite remember, but I would be saying something like one of those my also albums from the seventies or the eighties. Okay, yeah. So something instrumental, you know, uh, quiet and exotic. So, and <laughs> yeah. and then, but for that scene, the up in an out back, they, you're just gonna see lots of these gum trees. They call them ghost trees because their bark is so white. And yeah, it, it just takes out even during the day. They they are so white, and that's when I edit this shot. I'm trying to enhance that to uh-huh. bring it out a bit more. And I. What I see there are the three trees. I think of them as the three sisters out in the outback, you know, like uh, it, it is very spiritual land there. It's one of the uh, cultural landscape, you know, it contains one of the world's largest collection of petroglyphs. You know what they are? They, they're rock art. And okay. can you believe it? There's one to two million images there. There's a world's largest collection. It's just been recently been nominated. We, the government has nominated it for UNESCO World Heritage List thing. Oh, what nice! So mm-hmm. yeah, and I think for for this shot, it, it is one of many. I, I have fifty of these shots, and the way I process them is what I just mentioned. Is it, it, it is very similar. It's all really quiet time, few hours, uh, post processing. So over the course of uh, three four days, one or two hours each day, late afternoon. I take these shots, then the post-processing time, yeah, it takes longer per image. And it mm-hmm. took me up over one year to finish that. And I thought by the end of it, okay, I think I got a series here. <laughs> yeah, so it, 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 it like. just amazes me. Yeah, I, I do not know what a series is. I, I'm not really into photography. Yeah, it's just, I did what I did. And yeah, and then as I start to learn about photography, I pick it up. Yep, I, I can understand what a series is. and. Yep, and I got this one here, and all this. The reason I did it once a week is because I post it on Instagram. It, it is I try to use my Instagram as my portfolio, so I just make a routine of I'm gonna post one a, one a week, uh, and yeah, and it, it it just kept going on and on, fifty consecutive weeks to do this, and the raw silence is yeah one of the many. And it, it, it is, I'm glad you chose that one because it's one of my favorite ones as well. It's really dark, it's really quiet, but it's so quiet you think you can hear the roar of something, a spirit or something or going over the landscape. Yeah. yeah. So, so definitely you are onto something here. I think if you would continue with this particular you know, look and feeling and, you know, uh, with a series exactly of images, I mean, it would make for yeah. a beautiful book. Beautiful collection of images, you know, beautiful exhibition one day once you print them. I mean, this is yes. a bu- beautiful photograph that there's n- nothing to nothing to say. It's like full of atmosphere and really, yeah, ju- just love it, you know. So like, ha- have you tried printing it or not yet? Can you believe it? I've never printed anything. <laughs> well, I started in 2017. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen any of my work on paper yet. Yeah, that, so... that is a good time. Okay, we, we talk about it another time. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, so let's yeah let's switch gear because you are also doing something completely else based on your photographs. You have a project uh, which is called, I guess, is it correct? Work in motion. Yes, correct. So I and we will be displaying some of this those movie video files, right? Clips, so you don't, call them clips. clips. Yeah, yeah, you call them clips. So clips, yeah. tell us more about this. What's happening here? What's the idea behind and how will you create those uh, those clips? Sure. Um, it it all came about because of Instagram Reels. As you know, it came out like two, three years ago. And so they say, oh, if you, yeah, at, at that time I was very much in Instagram, but to, to show my work and they say, Oh, there's a new feature called Reel. What what can I do with it? So, so I, and mm-hmm. I know that when I do my edits, my post processing, I'll have like um, fifty or ten versions of that image as the work progresses along. Then yeah. when I look at it, 
I, I look at it on my, uh, what do you call it? On my Lightroom screen, all the thumbnails. I could see, wow, if I just put all this exporting into a film, uh, uh, into a movie clip, one second, two second transition, and I play it and I could see I'm actually moving the light around the landscape. I thought, this is fantastic. Now I can actually put music to do a real, I, I'm most passionate about music. It, it's something that uh, helped me survive in this world. It's really, you know, it, it really is what I rely on to get me through, you know, everything that's in the past okay. uh, decades, many yep. decades growing up. So now it's, I find photography is doing the same thing for me. It is actually giving me new life uh, into what I do and it's energizing me quite a bit and I, I thought this it's really great I could actually combine music into a working motion the, the only problem with that is it, um, all those music are copyright so luckily Instagram when you upload you can clip on it any music that's copyrighted and it's not a problem uh, so it, yeah I just went to town doing that so, so, so some of them are essentially just um, different versions of my work during post processing. I just combined it in, so you're gonna see the light moving around as I adjust the light a bit here and there. See how it, how it might look, and um, that there's some of them. I take it a bit further and just put in some more animation because for for one scene I had was. Uh, in a park with a modern bay fig trees, they're huge trees, and they have a big canopy across the the whole park, like just one big yep. tree, like it could be mm -hmm. hundreds of years old. I think I'm giant bad. roots. Yeah, just looking at this yes. particular one. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and I could just again imagine what if there's a source of light floating through this space, and that's what I did. But that is a, this is a light source I added in and make it move through that space. What what would you say so, would be the, what would you say would be the, the final destination for this kind of files? Like in a in an ideal world, would you when you will be displaying it would it be on on screens in a in an exhibition room? What would you where would you see them? You know the final destinations. Yes, I have you heard of the uh, yeah. NetGear's got a frame out called Mural. It's a digital frame with wooden borders. <laughs> Yep. It's 16 by 9, 27 inch. I've got one of those. Okay. And I can only dream about a gallery having 10 of those on the walls, playing all my work in motion. <laughs> That's why I envisioned. Mm -hmm. yeah. now, and so you, so said, you, said, you said you combine each of them with, with audio? In Instagram Reel, but now I struggle because they're all silent. What my raw files, my raw video are silent. And yeah, so, so now if I'm going to do that, it's going to be silent without the music. Okay. So the, that's the only thing I struggle with. How do I get the music I want to be play with it mm -hmm. and satisfy the copyright? How would you say, uh, what's the, you know, when it comes to perception of such, such piece, you know, uh, from a viewer's perspective. So this is a moving picture, kind of. It's, a, it's something, you know, it's a, a clip, video clip. Then compared to a, um, to a still image, uh, which one would you say is more captivating for the viewers? Is it a completely different experience? Or like, uh, what are you trying to achieve, you know, when it comes to the, to the final viewer? I think they complement each other. The way I worked it out mm -hmm. is you can appreciate the still image, but <clears throat> when you look at the work in motion, it, it gives a different sort of feeling to it as in it, it is more encapsulating what I see in that image. But if uh -huh. still photo, uh, the still image, when people look at it, they come looking at it from the app. Uh, experience and it could be open to more interpretation that I have no control over that but with a work in motion I feel that I get more control over what I want the viewer to see mm -hmm. and yes if I'm going to have it in a gallery it'll be the still frame and then the moving frame side by side 
Yeah. Peter, you know, I was just thinking, you just told me at, at some point before we recorded it that you are kind of at the beginning of your, you know, photographic journey, that you're an amateur and so on and so forth. I can see you are pretty deep into, you know, serious experiments already. Some images are truly excellent. So, uh, yeah, well, if you continue at this speed, I think we can be, you know, we will be visiting your exhibitions relatively soon. <laughs> <laughs> I yes, mean, that's I, what, I, that's what I wish you anyway. Yes, I, I'm really uh, grateful for that, Tobas. It is uh, really inspired me to keep going. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank, thank, thank you for that. If if there's a little part you know from on on our on our side, you know, of of this inspiration, then it's great. Uh, what, what's what's happening in the nearest future? You have any trips planned, or maybe projects, or like continuing on those ideas? Yes, I believe you know the other than the Murija the on country series, so those are the shots I took uh, over a few days, becoming a one year's work, duration of work. I sort of uh, stumbled upon another series uh, called Middle of the Road series. So this is capturing scenes of familiar work, comic route, any other places in my city where if you drive to work every day, you're going to see the same scenes day after day after day. And I, since I developed that photography eye, I try to look a bit more and I have to thank the traffic jam for that because it slows me down. And <laughs> yeah, I just look out the window <laughs> and I, I, I see some scenes. Yeah. And I, I see gum trees in the middle of the road. I, I've been driving past for years. I never seen before. And, you know, I, it started with that at one Saturday morning, at very early, gone to the middle of the road right there and start taking photos yeah and that's something i haven't done before to 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 do that uh in public and by the way that was with a sony camera now so during the covid times as you know lots of people start having their paths been diluted changed messed up for me i i just got a camera just before covid happened and i took the opportunity to actually learn how to use a camera start to learn about iso Aperture, shutter speed, and yeah, and be on the road out in public for the first time. That was a wonderful experience, and I I, I just don't see people anymore. I was in a zone, and that's yeah. I think yeah, well, everybody just yeah. make sure you stay safe. Yeah, they're on the roads, you yeah, know. Safe. The the, the meat. It's uh, a medium. It's a race medium. Yeah, it, it's quite <laughs> safe then. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Oh, and you, you, so you, so you, that's you. that's one thing I'm gonna do, and. Uh, but I only got a couple of shots there, so it's going to be taking a long while yet. I'm going to develop it. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah. So, so all this series, they come up by chance. These two series is based on what I do. I shoot and I see a pattern there. And, uh, yeah. And looking at the Murujagan country series, I might be thinking about creating a book out of that, but yeah, it's still early stage. And particularly when, uh, Hopefully you get me let's go World Heritage Swiss thing for that place. And yeah, having the book would be a good way for for me to honor that that uh nomination as well. Yeah. Oh wonderful. So, but it's yes, and it, photo book design, that is so uh, another whole challenge I love to get so I have to work on that. Yeah. Which I haven't started, but that's gonna keep me busy. And one the and one other thing is I'll be hunting for visuals in the most unlikely places where it's not, it's not a place or location that matters. It is what the combination, the arrangement of shapes, textures, you know, and the tones, light. And for example, I, I take an orange peel, chuck it on the backyard, late afternoon sun, it's glowing orange, and just try to play with shooting it, see how, what comes out. And yeah, so just to look for things that you don't need to travel for no absolutely you before you you just defined you know actually the photography the way i see it you you, you said you are seeing things that you have not been seeing before uh, you know even though passing the same places thousands of times and th- th- that's really what, what photography is all about and uh, you know backyard your street there is just uh, never ending you know uh, possibilities of 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 crea- creating some some 
truly compelling images. So we are de definitely sharing this, uh, you know, the approach here. So oh yes, yeah. I, I, I'm I'm glad it, 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 it's so validating how I work, how I think. It's like okay, I'm not not being being a uh, uh, amateur body. I, I I just do what I do, and I'm glad to hear that you actually feel the same way, and it sounds like a uh, validate book. Yeah, I got something in common with you that no, no, no. Well, absolutely, we, I, you are, yeah, you are can the, relate to, yeah. On the right path. So, you know, wishing you all the best yeah. with all the ideas, projects, books, you know, uh, looking forward for the, to, to the, you know, to see all the new images and, uh, yeah, we, we, we're staying in touch, right? On the frames platform yes, and uh, many things. Happening. Yeah. Yeah. Peter, thank you so much. Uh, for, for joining us today. Uh, yeah, see you around in the community. Yeah. Yes, it's been a pleasant chat. Thanks for that, Thomas. Really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Yeah. Peter, Cheers. talk Bye. soon. Bye-bye. Yeah. Talk soon.